Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina. This is Lifting Pins and Needles, a channel all about sewing. Thank you so much for joining me today, for taking a bit of your time to see what I've been up to. Please subscribe. I'd love you to join this little community we have here going on. Um, I'd love for you to be part of it. So just click on that subscribe, click on the like or dislike. You know, if you don't like it, you can dislike as well. <laughs> And if you want to share with your friends that you think that the things I am showing you, the tips and all the fitting things, the sewing things could be useful, please share as well. I've had a bit of a setback with my sewing due to my son's illness. He is recovering, but it was a pretty, pretty strong flu. <laughs> you know, it's been quite drawn out longer than I expected, but you know, we're getting there, we're getting there and that's really good. Thank you for your patience. I know I didn't post. <laughs> I'm like two videos down because I usually post three times a week and my last video was last Sunday so I am owing two videos to the channel but I'm gonna catch up don't you worry <laughs> well in my plans I mentioned I had won a gift card for closet case patterns and I used that gift card to buy the newest collection that they released just a few days ago and it's called the Rome collection and it's three patterns, a top, skirts, and pants. They all have different views. And I have been sewing up all these three patterns and many views of them. So I've made a lot of garments. And today I want to show you the tops. So this is called the cielo top, means sky. In Well, cielo means that in Italian, Spanish, it's the same thing, means sky. And this one has a lot of views. I'm going to put some line up here. There are four views here. and all the features can be mixed and matched. So there's a shift dress, there's a crop top, there's different types of sleeves and uh, like an angle yoke at the back, two on each side. View A is a short sort of crop top with normal sleeves. View B has the same crop top but like humongous gathered sleeves with huge cuffs. View C is the shift dress and view D is the same shift dress but with these pocket features on the front. Um, I decided not to go with the shift versions because these types of loose boxy style dresses do not suit me at all so I can deal with the crop tops <laughs> but you'll see I'll make some changes to them as well. So I am going to be sort of focusing on view A and view B, those are the ones that I have made and I've made another view that I've invented myself but I'll show you that later. They mention a huge selection of fabrics, just depends on the look that you're going for. So if it's more structured, they mention linen, chambray, cotton. And if you want a more flowy look, they mention tensile, rayon, cotton voile. None of these that I used. <laughs> so out of all the fabrics listed, I didn't choose any of them to make my three tops. I chose a satin chamois, I chose chiffon, and I chose a satin back crepe. So totally not the recommended fabrics, but you know, <laughs> just, you know, the, those are my choices and I'm quite happy with my choices. About the sizing, this pattern comes in sizes 0 to 20 US and it also has cup sizes, an A and B cup, a C and a D cup size with a bust of 32 to 48 inches and hips 33 to 48. Positive ease around the bust and the hips is about 5 to 6 inches. The crop top is pretty short at 20 and a half inches and the dress version is very short at 28 inches. That is equivalent to 71 centimeters. Now, that for me is a tunic length. If I made a dress that long, because I know it would cover my bottom by about that much. So it's a mini dress, although it doesn't look like that on the models, on the product pictures, but yeah, just keep that in mind. Um, I would measure actually the pattern pieces and confirm and just lengthen to the length that you find is okay. For me to have a dress above the knee would have to be 100 centimeters, a whopping 12 more inches than the dress length that they offer there. But as I mentioned, I'm steering away from the dresses. I think this pattern for me is only handy for the tops. Um, in dresses styles, I prefer more fitted other styles, not, not the loose shift style. I, I, I don't wear that, you know? When I look at the size chart, there is quite a lot of ease as I mentioned. My measurements fall between a 14 and a 16 at the hips, but considering that this is a crop top that doesn't actually reach my hips and it won't, I won't need that measurement, I just made a straight size 14. 
Now in Up Close and So Personal, you are going to see a myriad of feet adjustments I made as I went along. Some of these I made before sewing the top because I always flat measure, check for apex height, all that sort of thing. And others I figured out along the way uh, while I was making my first top. Now my first top, you're gonna see hints of color there, but I'm gonna show you that after the Up Close and So Personal. So get comfy to watch and see all the things that I got up to and then I will be back to show you three tops full of color and super fun. What you're going to see is adjusting the length, redirecting the arm side darts, some waist shaping, lowering the neckline, adapting the arm side to a sleeveless view lots to see and I'm going to start by lengthening it. There is a shorten and lengthen line on the top and the top is really cropped only 20 and a half inches so here you see the front and the back of the pattern pieces next to each other as you can see this is where you're supposed to cut for the crop line and that is the, the hem and that is only 52 centimeters that is too short for me so I'm lengthening it by three inches as you can see there now there is a lengthen and shorten line, you know, but what's the point? Look, the side seams are super straight, so if I lengthen it at the hem, it makes absolutely no difference. That is what I decided to do. The next thing I want to do is redirect the arm side that towards my apex. I know that 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 is pointing too high. I measured my apex and I marked it there, as you can see with that red dot there. I want the dart to finish about an inch away from the apex. So it's not right on the apex and I'm using the same depth of the dart. I'm just redirecting it to, you know, the point where it's going to look better on me. Easy adjustment to make. Next, I, after trying it on, after basting it and trying it on, I want to add some slight waist shaping. It's, it's, a, it's a box basically and a, a box style doesn't suit me that well. So where you see the ruler is the stitch line at 5 eighths of an inch. And that is where my waist height is. I know this by trying it on. So I want to take that in a further 3 eighths of an inch. You can see there where I would sew at, you know, 5 eighths of an inch. And that is the dot there where I would sew. But I want to take it in further 3 eighths of an inch right there. And so from the arm side, I'm going to just taper in slightly and then taper back out to meet the hip line. That is going to give slight waist, waist shaping. It's going to look better. After doing that on the top, I've transferred that to the paper. You, the same thing I did on the top by pinning it on myself. I'm, you know, making sure. Now the waistline here for the pattern is slightly lower than mine. As you can see, my waistline is about three eighths of an inch higher and that's very typical for me. There you can see the stitching line that I'm going to have now, my new stitching line. And I need to cut out excess from the side, so I measure 5 eighths of a seam allowance from my new stitching line, trim that out and I've modified my pattern piece and this is what I'm going to use moving forward for all the versions, all the views. I'm going to do the same shaping to the back pattern piece as well. Also after trying it on I think neckline is a little bit too high so I'm going to drop it by one inch. Very easy modification, i just drawn it here onto the top itself. You can see where I've tapered that using a, a you know French curve or a curved ruler and I've dropped it by an inch now at the center front there there is a section there's about three eighths of an inch where it's pretty flat like a straight line and that is so you don't get an accidental sort of V shape so that's straight and then with your ruler whatever you know ruler you use from that point I start the curve up and match the same you know seam on the top now, after doing two versions with sleeves, I want a sleeveless one too. I know the arm side needs raising from trying on my other ones. I am raising it by three centimeters and sort of at half of the arm side, I drew a curve. The other thing I also need to do is true out that dart. So I've closed my new dart, trued out that new curve for the arm side. You're gonna see that after I trim off this excess paper, that dart is going to have the correct shape for me to cut it from fabric and then the dart when I sew it up is going to match perfect. I'm not going to have like wonky seams there. Look at that shape. Now I need to raise the back arm side as well. This is much easier. It's the same 3 eighths. I've just, you know, taken that curve up above the notches. Very easy. 
Now the last thing, the darts need to be deepened because there is gaping and the shoulders need to be narrowed and I get all this information from trying my top on. This side hasn't been fixed so you can see all that gaping there. I mean that's normal, <laughs> there are supposed to be sleeves there but on the other side I've pinned a further 3 8 of an inch there and that closes up that gaping. I've also got pins to mark how much I need to narrow that shoulder so it looks good as a tank top. So you can see where all this bit is there is not looking that great but on the other side it's looking good. You can see the angle of the dart you know after I fixed it is good. Initially it would have been above there where I'm showing you. I've corrected this dart, I've just made it deeper you know just drawn it out again and sewn it. It's quite bulky so I actually surged the edges off up to a certain point to not have all that bulk pressed down and now the excess I had to trim off the shoulders. I took it off one side and then that little sliver of fabric I had I pinned the raw edges to the other side exactly so I can cut the other side and it'll be the same. I end up with these two pieces of fabric pinned to each other that I've cut off from both sides and they are identical. Okay, I hope that was fun to watch. I have specially gotten requests of how I turn things into sleeveless. Well, there you saw how I did it on this one and I'll talk about that when I get to show you the sleeveless view. First, let's look at the super colorful one I made in a satin charmeuse and this is it. This fabric was sent to me uh, from the States, from Vivian, my friend. She stitches and seams on Instagram. And she sent me this last year and love it. I had it for something special. I always keep these fabrics and suddenly inspiration strikes and I make them, you know, so I'm glad I saved it. Um, this fabric is like on in its full extension. It went from blue tones to pink to oranges and then it finished on the other side with yellow. And I placed my pattern pieces that way. So here it starts on the blue area, goes off to the greens then it goes off to the pinks and then towards the back it ends on the other side on the yellow. So on this side seam you have that big color contrast of yellow and blue that I really like that color contrast if you didn't know. <laughs> and then on this other side it's more sort of, it just flows you know. Um, I really had a lot of fun playing with how I was going to cut the sleeves as well. Uh, so on this side you have that the green sort of goes onto the sleeve and then this is full contrast, you know, the coral from the back. So the contrast is there on the back as well. I cut my cuff pieces out of the darker areas. So there was dark, dark areas of blue that I used for the cuffs and to cut those angled yokes at the back. I think it makes the top look super cool and super colorful and totally me. Um, so this was the first one. This is the one I used um, to try on, to figure out what I needed to change, add shape, you know, shape at the sides a little bit, drop the neckline. Um, they have you inserting these sleeves on the flat and I never do that. I never ever do that on woven garments. I set them in traditionally because I want to try them on before actually sewing them. So I wanted to confirm that the shoulder width was going to be okay for me. That is something I sometimes have an issue with, that they're too wide or too narrow or anything like that. So I did um, base them on first and check for the fit and the fit was perfect on the shoulders. So. Yeah, that's just my thing. Um, they do instruct to like set them in on the flat and then make that seam just one. I don't do that. <laughs> I made this top out of a yard of fabric and there was an option to have facing inside. There are facing pieces and it's also instructed to use bias binding. There is also a piece for that. I didn't have enough fabric for either of those options. So I just used my own store-bought satin bias tape that matches. And that is how I finished the neckline. And actually I finished all the necklines with bias binding. I don't really like facings that much. So bias binding is the way to go for me. Due to the nature of this fabric, I actually hand hemmed it. So it's been surged, turned up and hemmed by hand. I don't think like top stitching looks really nice on satin. So I took the extra time and did it by hand. Here you can see me wearing it. I really like the length of those sleeves. 
you can see the crazy contrast on the sides there. <laughs> it's really crazy. I, this, I find this looks like a work of art, like I'm wearing a painting. I finished my necklines with bias binding. There was an option to do facings or bias binding. The cuffs were supposed to be top stitched around the sleeves. I didn't do that because for this fabric, I don't think top stitching is a good option. Look at the contrast there on the angled yokes at the back. I think it looks really cool with the blue. Um, overall, this is just a top that is super cool and I'm gonna love wearing with denim or even with red on the bottom. Super happy with this and all the adjustments I did, you know, make, make it work. After I'd done the view A, I wanted to try the view B. Now this is a view that has humongous gathered sleeves. The pattern piece is very big, like it's huge. <laughs> Takes up a lot of fabric actually. Um, but I thought, you know, if I'm gonna try this version with those huge sleeves, I have to do it in a really flowy, like thin fabric. I can't do it in a fabric that's gonna create a lot of volume, you know? So I chose chiffon. I bought this fabric at the beginning of the year. Uh, when my husband took me on my birthday shopping spree for fabric when I turned 40. So I had this fabric and I thought it's going to be perfect. The print is crazy enough that I don't have to match it. And the combination of colors is just what I love. So I'll stop teasing you and just show you. <laughs> this is view B. So these are the huge gathered sleeves. Uh, this, this part there is basically the same thing. You know, I'd already fixed the pattern as you saw, dropped the darts, all that thing. Um, I also did bias binding, self bias binding for this neckline. I had enough for that. These cuffs here are double and they're angled and shaped. You can't really see that, like, yeah. They're smaller on the bottom and they're wider on the top. So you cut four cuff pieces, two for each arm. And you can see the amount of gathers there at the front, the back. This one I also did not insert like on the on the on the flat, like it said. I, I inserted it normally, like a normal sleeve, because you know. <laughs> now what I did for this one, just to make it a little bit more fun, I made those angled yokes at the back in red linen. You can see there, and I've top stitched that on the shoulder seam and top stitched the seam allowance up so that on this side, because it's totally sheer, you can't see the seam allowance. So you can't see the seam allowance on the shoulder seam or on the, on the yoke seam. So tucked in there, and I think it looks really cool. I mean, this is a detail for me. I, I think linen with chiffon is a mix I'd never made. <laughs> but because yokes can take a more structured fabric, I think they match really well. Um, the length adjustment you saw that I made, I did lengthen it a little bit. I think it would have been way too cropped for my length, for my height, to have a top sitting at 52 centimeters. That is just too cropped for me. So three inches extra, as you can see there. For this one, I did uh, the hem by machine. Love it. Here you can see the huge sleeves, how they hang. I think this is perfect for chiffon, you know, all that volume. The chiffon can take the volume and look look how that print goes it's just crazy and i just love this combination of colors there you can see that neckline the vice binding the gathers around the sleeves i think it looks really neat and i'm trying to show you the angled yokes i did in linen there <laughs> hard to show you i think i'm gonna pull my hair up and show you both sides or something like that to do that <laughs> i think it looks really neat i like the combination i definitely need to wear this with a cami top under yeah i'm trying to show you the double layers of the cuffs how they sit how they lie this was a really fun sew all the pieces came together perfect and i really enjoyed making this top i definitely want more of these
So there is a specific color I'd been meaning to make a top from for ages and I bought this fabric a while back and it's a satin backed crepe. It's beautiful fabric in a rich green color. I needed it for certain items of clothing that I think would match and have nothing to wear them with. So yeah, I only had 70 centimeters of that fabric because I bought it with the intention of making a tank top. Now, this pattern does not come with a tank top view. They all have, you know, sleeves. And because the fit is quite boxy and, and a little bit dropped on the shoulder a tad, uh, the arm size is quite low. It's lower than your standard, more fitted top with, with sleeves, you know? So while I was making my first two tops, I did note that the arm size was like way down here. I couldn't just make a tank top without modifying that arm size. So that's why you saw me raise it by three centimeters. Now in hindsight, I think I could have raised it a half a centimeter more, maybe three and a half. I think I will go back and do that on the pattern. Now, when I transform normal tops into sleeveless views, sometimes I have to create that arm side dart there that is not there. But this pattern already has that arm side dart there like a design feature. So it made it the perfect transformation to a tank because I was able to take that dart, make it a little bit deeper to get rid of the gaping that is normal for it to be there because this is not a tank. It's supposed to have a sleeve. So I was able to fix that and get a really nice closure around there. You saw how I did all those little tricks and I'm super happy with it. So this is my green top. And I didn't have any, any more to make like self bias binding out of the same fabric. So I used a contrast bias binding. I made this myself. I have a top that I made from this fabric and I think it looks really cool. So that is how I finished the armholes and the neckline. And I have done one top stitch. Now this fabric is really hard to top stitch and to get perfection but that is as much as perfection that I am going to achieve with this type of fabric. Now, one little detail I made to, it, it's a pretty plain top. The fabric is very nice. So for these yokes at the back, the angled yokes, I use the uh, opaque side of the fabric. So the AKA the wrong side of the fabric. When actually this type of fabric, you can sew it either way, either side that you like the best, but for all the, all the top I used the satiny side, the shiny side on the outside and for the little yolks I used the opaque side and I think it looks really nice. That there, I did have to make the darts a little bit wider and I showed you that I um, removed some of that bulk because the dart ended up being quite wide so it's partially surged just to reduce bulk. This one has also been hemmed by hand, surged and hemmed by hand. If you notice, I have surge a thread in every single color. Every time I go to town, I always have a list on my phone of colors I want to get, like yellow, orange, the most random colors. <laughs> so I did have green and this is all like being surged in green. And I really like it when that those types of details match the fabric that it would really disturb me if this was like surged in white thread or black or something like that so yeah this is the third one here's my top i really like the length of this top as all the others you can see that it, it's it's boxy but not that boxy with the shaping i gave it at the waist uh, you can see that the arm size is is okay it's like like i like i like to wear it it could have been a little bit higher on the side but it's okay um, there I'm showing you my bias binding, that is the shaping on the side, how I managed to close off that gaping with the dart and I'm trying to show you that angled yoke, a little bit of bra strap peeping there from my position <laughs> but I think this is a really nice top and it's going to serve me well for many outfits. So those are my three versions. 
I really enjoyed making them. I knew I had to make those feet adjustments. I'm really meticulous about this thing and I study even the website when they offer a product. I look at the models and how the clothes you know, sit on them. And from observing that, I knew that these arm side darts were too high. They were even high on the product pictures. They were like lying on top of the bust on some of the pictures there. So I knew that it was something I really had to focus on immediately and do my flat measuring, you know, measure from the top there down to what, where I know my apex is. And I've said it many times, you know, it's 31 centimeters. It's usually an inch lower than what patterns are drafted for. I am very long in this area and that is why Sometimes turning things into sleeveless works really well for me because my length from here to there is very long. Like I am long in the upper body. Then I have a really short torso and then very long like crotch length and legs and stuff. And that's just the way that my body is, you know? So yeah, um, I definitely recommend taking a look at all these details before you cut into fabric. These are tricks that I do to not make real proper muslins. It, that would really frustrate me to make like every single garment and make a muslin. And this is a boxy style that could be really forgiving. You don't really need to do that if you sort out those little issues first. My next two videos will feature the other two patterns from this collection. The Fiore skirts, I made two, and the Pietra pants. So I don't know which one's coming first, just depends on the order I get them edited and things and photographed. <laughs> so keep your eyes peeled for that. I hope you enjoyed watching this and that it was useful. Uh, the tips, like to get your own fitting. I show you what I do on me, but you can certainly apply those things to yourself. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and I will see you soon. Bye.